Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Streets of Steel. Streets of Steel is a side-scrolling style board game for one to four players. It takes about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to play the game, and in the game, you're going to be basically playing as a fighting character moving across the street. Now, the board is going to be ever-moving, which is kind of interesting. It reminds you of those side-scrolling games, because as you move your character along the, fight, the fighting streets, you're going to encounter new bad guys, different things like obstacles, as well as items that you can pick up throughout the game. After you've gone throughout the entire street, you're gonna find the boss at the very end, the big macho boss, and you're gonna have to pound him into the ground. Now what's really cool about this game too is that every single character sheet comes with not only nice little pixelized style artwork that reminds me of River City Ransom and those kind of games, as well as like Battle Toads and so on and so forth, but it's got all your stats, your character, your artwork, and then these little wild abilities here, and you can choose to use these instead. They're basically special abilities you can choose to do. Normally you're gonna be using dodge they're going to allow you to kick or die they're going to allow you to punch and the enemy will have that opportunity as well as using event die but throughout the entire game you're just going to be trying to bash your way through and complete the level this is of course a preview copy so i only have one of the bosses and a certain amount of streets just to show you enough of what the game looks like but let's go ahead and show you the contents anyway here are the components for Streets of Steel, and as you can see, you're going to get four different characters to choose from, along with four different villains and or enemies and bosses. Now, of course, this is the prototype, so however many more might be added or uh, taken out, I'm not too sure, but this is what I've got here. You're also gonna be having cubes or maybe life point markers of some type, these wild point markers, and everybody's gonna start with certain amounts during, and I'll talk about the setup in a little bit here. But not only that, you're going to get street tiles here, and they're gonna be based on the difficulty of the game, as what colors are going to be popping up, along with what it shows you on the street. You're going to be getting a bunch of different character models here, which are either going to be standees or miniatures, uh, along with some other stuff like a deck of item cards, a deck that is going to indicate what's going to happen after every turn, along with a boss deck when the boss is encountered. The last thing you're also going to be getting are uh, these little things here, which are going to be respawn tokens, and these dice here. You got punch, kick, and special event die. All right, let me go ahead and tell you about the turn of the game. For Streets of Steel, you simply are going to have to set up a number of players along with the number of boards related to what difficulty and how many players in the game. You're also going to shuffle all the decks and all that, and I'll get into that along with the setup and the rules, show you a couple of the turns in a bit down here. But before that, basically on your turn, you're going to have four different actions. You're going to be able to move, be able to use your wild ability, you're going to be able to draw one of those wilds, little uh, blue thing cubes here, along with doing your basic attack, which is going to be punches and kicks depending on the character. Uh, you're going to set your character up on the board and move along. After everybody is ta after you've taken your turn, you're going to simply draw one of these cards here and do what it says. If you can't do what it says, usually it'll tell you to draw a new one and also indicate which player is going to be attacked or how the character, the bad guys are going to move or when to spawn new bad guys. You're also going to be able to draw these item cards here and that is during certain points in the game where you're going to be taking this uh, one of these boards here and placing loot on these crates here. And you can go ahead and walk on the crates and pick up the loot and then you'll be able to draw the loot. And sometimes you're going to get stuff like a Slurpo or a trusty steel pipe or even the A the loyal canine dog. So all very important cards there. Um, but let me go ahead and take it down, show you how to set up the game as, long, as well as a couple uh, turns of a four player game. So the game has now been set up, and let's go ahead and talk about the setup. There's all four characters here for a four-player game. You've got the board here. There's three different tiles here, along with a deck of tiles, and based on the difficulty of the game is how many tiles will be here. And then you've also got the monsters and or bad guys here on the board. And where they spawn is based on the number indicated in the bottom left-hand corner of their card, along with on the board. So a one is going to be a punk, and a two is going to be a firebug. And you're just going to put them on the board where they spawn. Each of these areas is a space, and on the space has two two sides, a left, a right side and a left side. And whenever you have the bad guys starting, they're always gonna be on this side. And whenever they do an action, they will be moved to this side, indicating they've been used already. Uh, you've got your characters and they're gonna be sitting on some, some, some area over here on this side of the board, because they're gonna be going this way as the game progresses. And these pieces are going to move off of the board. We've made sure that we've got the main deck shuffled here and the boss deck along with the item deck. And everybody has their full total health points. They've got their wild uh, power that they're gonna be starting with. So every single person is going to have one to begin with and of course their maximum capacity how far they move uh, and what type of dice they use to fight three one two two four zero and one three you've got the bosses over here and that's where they spawn and then what type of damage they do when you walk off of them so you can't walk off of bosses and you've also got um, their defenses and finally how many power they give when you defeat them
Uh, the final thing is these little wild power areas here. You can use these as an action to simply do whatever it says. This one will allow you to do, do a two punches and a kick to all baddies in the row, and you don't collect any wild points for any if you a baddie, because normally you do get one of these guys every time you defeat these. So to begin the game, you just select a player to go and put this marker on. And as everybody goes along the board, this is going to be moving, so the first player will be changing. And you'll start by doing your three actions. So for instance, this guy can go ahead and move. He can move up to two, which is going to cost him one action. And then for his next action, he's going to get to take two punches and a kick. And he's going to go ahead and roll them on the board. That's only going to be one. And then the punk has a defense of two, so that's not going to do it. So he's going to go ahead and choose to roll again. Uh, that's still two, so that's not going to be enough. So he can simply choose to re-roll. Now you can re-roll by removing this wild power. Every time you do that, you can take a die that has a blank and choose to try and re-roll it. Ah, didn't get it. But if he did, that would have worked perfectly. Unfortunately, he didn't. So he's going to be stuck on this board here with the bad guy. That's his three actions used. And then, of course, the next player is going to get to go. But before that happens, you're going to take a card from the top of this deck. And based on the num numerical um, number on here is based on what's going to happen to you on the board whenever you encounter one of those toxic obstacles. But when you flip it over at the end of a turn, it's going to read what kind of monsters are going to take the action and what they do and if they can't do that thing then you can draw a new card along with the order of priority this one says to move three to the nearest hero and attack with two punches there's no kill gurus on the board so we're not going to worry about this card to begin with so that's pretty good the next player is going to get to go and that's going to be candy connor and she's orange so she can move one and two these are going to end movement and then she can choose another action if she'd like which she will to go ahead and move so she'll move to here that's one and she's going to stop now she's also going to attempt to roll a die so she's going to get three punches and a kick and this is her last action and she got four which is enough that defeats the two defenses punk has the punk's going to get removed and she's going to get a wild power which she can use for these abilities or to reroll dice that's pretty good uh, she's also going to have to flip one of these cards over and see what it says firebugs uh, target all heroes on this street tile attack with one dd so the danger die or the event die here and this is not re-rollable so, okay, uh, everybody on the street tile with the firebugs would go ahead and uh, target a player. Uh, here's a street tile here, I believe, so she would go ahead and roll that. That's one damage to her, so she'd lose one health. Go ahead and put this aside, and then the next player is going to get to go. Uh, she's going to get to go. She's green. She's going to move one and two and three and four. That's two actions. And her final action to defeat this punk over here. She's got one punch. She's got three kicks and she's going for the jugular here. Whoa! Two, four, six, seven. That's the highest you, you can roll pretty much with those three die. That's going to obliterate this guy here and score her a wild power. Pretty solid. Now another card's going to get drawn. The kill gurus. There's still no kill gurus on the board so that's pretty good as well. Which means they're going to be coming up here pretty soon. And our final guy here, Mayor Von Damage. So we one and two, and as he moves past this guy, he's going to take uh, damage based on the numerical value right there, the, the symbol right there, which is this die, going to roll it, and he takes one damage just for moving across past him, and he can continue his movements. So that was one, two, uh, one action, and this is two actions. He's going to go ahead and fight the uh, firebug here, and this firebug has three defense, and he gets to roll four punches, so he needs to roll all four. Oh, that's three. He'll choose to use a wild power. Let's see if he can get him. Come on, come on. Yeah, he does it. And that knocks this guy out, giving him his wild power back that he had spent. And uh, once again, you take one of these guys here, flip it over and do what it says. Move three towards the uh, nearest hero and then attack with one punch. So all the punks left are going to move three towards the nearest hero. He's moved towards the nearest hero. This guy will go ahead and move one, two, and three. Uh, one and two. And this one, one and two. Okay, so he'll go ahead and start. He's got a punch on this guy. Let's see if he punches him. He does. He punches red. Red's going to take a damage. This guy over here is going to get punched as well. Twice, actually, because there's two guys there. And he's going to take one damage. Or she, I should say. And then um, I think that's it. Everybody's taking their damages. Okay. After that happens, the board is going to change. Now, anybody left on this tile here is going to be deeply in trouble. These characters are going to go off the board. And if you're left here, you're going to die as well. So this character was still here, so he shouldn't have been. But because he was, this tile is going to be moved off. He's going to get removed from the game. And you're going to have to use one of your respawns in order to bring him back. So red... It's going to place that right there, and these boards are going to go across, and a new board is going to be shown. This has got a three on it, so there's the kill guru that we were talking about. Actually, got two of them there. We've also got a one, 
and let's see if I can find one right there. And then we've also got some of these, which are pretty good. You got the nasty uh, slime stuff and you got the basic uh, package. These are basically gonna give you items when you walk on them. So this guy gets to respawn on his next turn, which is because this has been moved around here, he'll be last and he's gonna remove on the board. And the game will continue just like that, going back and forth. Uh, uh, when you pop these guys, if you walk on one of these guys, you're going to gain an item card and you can go ahead and use it. Some of them have bonuses, some of them have negatives and bonuses. And then this one's interesting too. Whenever you walk on one of these guys here that has a toxic crate, you get the item, but you also have to roll the die um, and determine what damage you take based on the, on the top of the cards here. So these can be kind of dangerous. And the game will progressively continue until the point in which either all characters have died and used up all of their continues, or you've gotten to the boss space here and where you'll place the boss. And this muty boss here is going to be doing some crazy stuff. I don't want to ruin too much about this. I'm not sure how much extra is going to be included in the game. I assume there's probably going to be some more bosses and whatnot. But you're going to need to defeat him. He's got a certain amount of life points and you'll need to get over his shields in order to do just one damage to him. He's also got his own unique boss deck that tells you what happens, what respawns, and how he moves, and how he punches people around the game. Now that is the basic idea for the game. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So a couple caveats before we go ahead and get started in the review. The first caveat is that when you walk onto an obstacle that's got that hazardous terrain, you're going to roll a die in uh, one of these little red dies here. And if you get an exclamation mark, you're going to take damage based on the top card of the event deck here. It could be a two, it could be a zero, it could be a one, depending on the turn. So certain turns would be better to go ahead and pull off that stunt than others. There's also quite a few items. You got stuff like this unwieldy chainsaw. You're gonna lose a speed for every action that you move, but you also can discard this to roll plus three uh, red dice, which is pretty powerful. Uh, you got bats, you've got slurpees that are gonna heal you, you've got rusty steel pipes, so on and so forth. And you're gonna be dying throughout this game, and when you do, you have these respawns, which are gonna be uh, based on, there's the difficulty, right? Uh, easy mode's five, and then normal mode's four, and then I guess it just gets harder the more respawns you don't have. <laughs> and not only that, but when you respawn your character on your turn, you're going to put your character back onto the board, which will give you a turn to get off of that last board there so you don't take that instant death. But when you have that first action on your turn, you're basically going to be invincible. So you can walk past traps and you can not have to suffer guys trying to slap you back. So you basically have like that star power from Mario Brothers. Um, and then the boss, of course, he has his own unique rules. And on the back of a boss's board here, it's got the red symbol there, which is going to indicate it's a boss. And it'll probably say that there is going to be what, what you need to do in order to set up the last turn for the game. Uh, the wild powers have a couple things. I'll talk about those really quick. You've got the special delivery, move an adjacent hero one space as an action. Uh, sign here, please. Deal five damage to a baddie and cancel the next behavior card's effect. That's pretty good. And then we'll go ahead and look at Mayor Von Damage here. And he's got leadership style, once a turn, give a hero your on your street tile, one um, wild power. Hands on for four, deal five damage to a baddie, and move them one space for each of the punch symbols. Pretty good. Oh, five P, five punches. P is punch, K is kicks. And you'll be using these dice here, so just in case you didn't know that. But all right, so that is the basic aspects of the game. This game feels like the River City Ransom. It feels like one of those old uh, 2D side-scrolling 8-bit style games, which you're moving around, you're going punch, 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 kick, knocking people backwards, you're flying backwards, you pick up a baseball bat and you start whacking them. I mean, if you like, just for the nostalgia aspect alone, it's kind of cool. I really like that aspect in games, and I really, really enjoyed those games. Uh, the one thing it didn't have for that nostalgia that I really wanted to kick in was have those little shops that you can walk into after you knock somebody out, they drop some coins, and then you can walk into the shop and pick some items out. I thought that would have been cool for the game, because everything else was there, especially if that river, it's River City Ransom feels really what, it, what it's, it's really strong in this game. But I wanted the coins to drop too, but everything else felt funny, because just like coins splattering everywhere, avoiding obstacles and whatnot, and the, the street is constantly moving, so you've got stuff like, oh, I don't know how like the Sonic levels kind of, if you, if, if you keep moving forward, then the the screen's gonna get you eventually. So it has that. The art's super cool. I really like the theme of the art. It does have that retro feel to it. It's good art. And um, I'm interested to see the miniatures. I have, have standees here. So a lot of these prototype pieces are still prototypey, right? So you're not, I'm not gonna get everything to show you, but if you look on the campaign, it should show you and you can have an idea of whether that's something you like or not. Um, as for how it works, the game itself, mechanic-wise, it is a basic 
dice chucker. You're chucking dice really hard. You have some strategic elements involved with where you move and how you move and what turns you pick up what items and then how you attack the boss. And your wild power does give you a nice little amount of change to like, okay, well, I only have these three abilities and oh, I hit the guy, but I couldn't kill him. Now he's going to kill me. But wait, wild power. Now my opponent, my, my ally had me move to another side of the board. So it has that cooperative Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles feel slash Battletoads feel, which is cool in the game as well. This is definitely another one of those games where I think you're going to like it or you're really going to dislike it. If you don't like a lot of luck based games, this has a lot of luck in it, especially the cards you draw. It's going to be sometimes when all the enemies are going to try and jump on you. You're, you're definitely going to die in this game. Whether or not you die too many times is the question, right? If you have enough continues to go on, you're going to be just fine. But otherwise, you can take some serious damage, which is kind of fun with these cards. You can see, like, sometimes you're going to see these, um, Oh, what are these ones called? The kill gurus. They're basically like little kangaroos. They're all going to jump on you and they're going to take away all your wild power and stuff like that. Just like weird little abilities that remind me of those old video games. So yeah, it's definitely formatted for certain people, I think, specifically people my age that remember all those style games, but it doesn't mean it's not fun for other people. I think the only thing that would probably take people away from a game like this is the amount of dice chucking and luck involved, but otherwise, it's a solid choice, it has a lot of nostalgia value, and it seems to be really, really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing all the different bosses. The boss I played against in this one was, was super fun. I really, really enjoyed it, and I liked how... You had a lot of the knockbacks and whatnot. In fact, I think what would be another cool thing is if you knock somebody and they knock, they flew off the board. That'd be cool when you knock them back. I don't know how that works or not, but I think if that is the case, that'd be cool as well. But anyway, that's what I think about the game. Definitely should check it out if you think this is something interesting for you. All right, let's go into it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out our other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as checking out Streets of Steel, currently on Kickstarter right now. It's got a uh, basic that basic nostalgia feel to it and also i would suggest checking out our website unfilteredgamer.com got tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more as well as checking out our artist page if you're an artist or if you're an artist uh that has stuff they want or if you maybe are making a game you can go ahead and check that out as well and checking out our friends everythingboardgames.com the giveaway geek and ferdinand the cardboard stacker well all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to seeing you next time